Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to all of you who have joined us for this uh, webinar, an introduction to the Bachelor of Science in Air Transport, uh, a collaboration between the University of Malta and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. My name is uh, Jason Dauchi, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Institute of Aerospace Technologies, and I'm very glad that you're here with us today, and I will be moderating uh, today's webinar. So on the agenda for this webinar, which is one hour long, uh, we will begin by giving you an introduction to the University of Malta and the Institute of Aerospace Technologies. After that, we'll also give you an introduction to our colleagues at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and their Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics. After that, we'll uh, go into the Bachelor of Science in Air Transport in more detail. And at the end of our session, we'll have some time for your questions. So before we begin, a few housekeeping uh, rules and guidelines. Uh, first of all, as you might have noticed, uh, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available for viewing after the event. Uh, so after the event, we will be sending you a link to the recording of the webinar. And we will also be posting the link on our social media, on Facebook and LinkedIn. And we will also be uploading the recording uh, onto YouTube. The audience will be kept on mute uh, during the session. However, as I mentioned at the end of the webinar, we will have some time for Q&A. And uh, if you'd like to ask a question then, and if you'd like to speak, then you can raise your hand and I will be able to uh, unmute you. Uh, alternatively, if you would like to ask a question, you can also post your questions directly in the Q&A section and you can access the Q&A section by clicking on the Q&A button in the Zoom uh, platform. So before we begin with the presentations, uh, I'd like to uh, do a quick round table to introduce you to the panelists of this webinar. Um, beginning with myself, I'm uh, Dr. Jason Gauci, as I mentioned, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Institute of Aerospace Technologies, and uh, I've been working at the Institute for the past uh, seven years. Um, over to you, David. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm David Zamit Manjan. I am the uh, director of the Institute of Aerospace Technologies. I've been uh, working for the University of Malta for the coming up to 30 years now, and uh, I've been primarily focusing my uh, work in the areas of uh, avionics for large transport airplanes. Kirsten? Hello, everyone. My name is Kirsten Aliki. I'm the director of the Embry-Riddle Worldwide Europe campus in Frankfurt, Germany. Over to Mark. Great, thanks. I'm Dr. Mark Ryman. I'm the program coordinator for Embry-Riddle's Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics program. Uh, my background is uh, doing aircraft maintenance in the US Air Force and teaching at the US Air Force Academy. And I've been with Embry-Riddle for about three years now. Linda. Aloha, I'm Linda Wyland. I've been with Embry-Riddle full-time for about 15 years. My background is air traffic and aviation maintenance in the military with the airlines and now with Embry-Riddle for about 15 years. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your introductions. And now I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Professor Devizelit Manjon to give us an introduction to the University of Malta and the Institute of Aerospace Technologies. And over to you, David. Thank you, Jason. Uh, just to give you a bit of a, uh, an insight of where we are, we are uh, Malta as a uh, island, a, a member state of the European Union, and uh, we, are, uh, we are sited just in the center of the Mediterranean, just south of Italy and Sicily. This little, this little dot here in yellow showing Malta just south of Sicily. So uh, that's just to give you an indication of geographically where we are located. Next slide, please. So Malta is a member state uh, strategically placed in the, in, uh, in the middle of the Mediterranean and the University of Malta is the, uh, located more or less on the central eastern part of the island uh, shown in, in, uh, in a red circle in the middle of the photograph on the right. And we've been established uh, more or less uh, a few hundred years uh, since uh, 1768, really. Our origins date back to 1768. And we've, be we've uh, been 
before our establishment on, on uh, in the 18th century, we've been uh, really linked to a previous setup in the in time of the Knights of St. John since the 16th century, late 16th century. Our emblem actually reflects the, uh, the coat of arms of the knight of the Grand Master Manuel, uh, Manuel Pinto, who, who actually set up the University of Malta in the late 18th century. Today, as we have been uh, ever since, but today we still remain the primary university uh, in Malta, and we are, we are uh, our, our remit is to provide all the uh, graduate training required for the country's needs. In today's modern needs, Malta is a, uh, an independent state and therefore needs to have all the graduate uh, workforce uh, available to be a, uh, a competitive country as it is in the European Union, a contributing com com a country in, uh, in the EU, and therefore uh, our university fills this role. To this effect, we have uh, 14 faculties, such as uh, that of medicine and uh, engineering, ICT, science, and so on and so forth, uh, 18 institutes, 13 centers, a number of schools and one junior college. Of course, the Institute of Aerospace Technologies is one of the 18 institutes listed there. To give you an indication of the size, we have uh, just abo above 11,000 students uh, attending the University of Malta, about 10% of which are currently foreign and international students. Our teaching structures are based on those of the United Kingdom. Malta was a colony for nearly 200 years uh, under, the Briti under British rule, and therefore the, in the uh, British influence is very strong in Malta. And, therefore, and as a result, the, uh, our teaching structures are based on the British the UK system, and our formal lang language of teaching is English. Being part of the European Union, we are also signatory to the, to the Bologna process. So we need to, we have our systems harmonized to the European standard. Next slide, please, Jason. The Institute of Aerospace Technologies has for many years, for uh, most of its uh, earlier times and, and before that, uh, focused on uh, primarily on research in the area of aerospace. And uh, Recent, more recently, we have the, extended our activities into teaching. Our primary focus was and has been and still remains the development of technologies for large transport category airplanes. So I say this because this is perhaps of relevance directly to this course. And we have a strong standing international relationship with uh, industrial primes and major research uh, agencies in Europe and beyond. I'll tell you a bit about that uh, in the next slide. From our teaching perspective, we not only provide a, uh, a portfolio of teaching for, for local students, be it in maintenance or in postgraduate education, but we are now through this uh, initiative between uh, Embry-Riddle University and uh, the University of Malta, we've, we've, we've got an international collaboration going also in teaching. Next slide, please. The key areas of perhaps just to give you a bit of a flavor of our research, we've been very active in uh, development of cockpit technologies, uh, display technologies, human machine interaction, uh, additional uh, crew support uh, systems. So the University of Malta was actually a uh, partner in the development of the first single screen display, end to end display, which I'm showing on the bottom left uh, photograph. That is uh, the Odyssey's uh, prototype developed by a consortium led by Thales Avionics. And on the right, we have an offshoot of that. We, uh, we have developed a technique where we control the, uh, the aircraft uh, via a, a single handheld device. We've also developed other technologies. This is just to give you an indication of our slant of what we tend to do at the University of Malta in the Institute of Aerospace Technologies. Next slide, please. And here again, uh, a, uh, a sort of collage of who we collaborated with uh, for several years. You will see major names, of course, there's Embry-Riddle right smack in the middle on the top, but uh, other perhaps uh, names you are familiar with, Boeing, Thales, uh, BAE Systems, and a few airlines like Alitalia, 
uh, NASA, of course, and, and a few other organizations. Okay, so that is who we are. Now, I would like to introduce you to the, to the main to the main theme of today, the dual degree program, before I pass on to our colleagues uh, from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. The idea is essentially to provide a university education to, uh, to pilots, to, pilot, to professional pilots. We, we define it as a pilot's license to fly turbine powered aircraft, but that effectively means most of the professional pilots. We are aware uh, that there is an emerging need and in future there will be an even bigger need for, for professional pilots to have degrees, not only because of the, uh, the uh, style of work in the professional, uh, in, uh, in professional flight crew is changing, but also because there is a, a large element, a significantly large element of flight crew who actually end up in desk jobs doing uh, effectively decision rework, uh, things like flight ops, uh, flight te uh, um, technical pilots, um, training captains, and so on and so forth. So there is a definitely a need to have university education in this respect. And we, with this dual degree program, look towards provide, uh, providing a service and, and, uh, and satisfying this need. Of course, what does this mean to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to the flight crew, to the professional pilot? Well, it is clear that it enhances prospects of uh, career improvement. It supports uh, crew to uh, pilots to make a better, to have a better crew de uh, decision making in the cockpit and also on the ground. And of course, on the other side of the spectrum, on the employer side, it definitely adds value to the employer. Next slide, please. How do we do this? Well, what does the degree contain? It primarily focuses on, on a number of pillars, four pillars. We look at the science and technology and other professional uh, subjects that are related to, to the aviator, things like um, uh, aviation law and human factors. And of course, the, uh, the, dual, the, 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 the program is actually also uh, point, uh, pointing towards in improving the soft skills of the, uh, of the student. At the end of the day, I'd like to point this out that the student graduates with two degrees, one from the University of Malta and the other from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University worldwide. The two degrees are the Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics, known as the BSA in Aero, and the Bachelor of Science in Air Transport uh, from the University of Malta. In this way, what we also do, another advantage of this dual degree program is it brings together the, uh, the US style of education and the European style of education. And there are, of course, very strong uh, advantages and features of, of both styles. And this dual degree program actually fuses these two uh, approaches together to create a, a, uh, a superior a superior product. The, the, the delivery of the program is particularly designed to support the flexibility that is required for pilots who are flying to be able to study on a part-time basis because this is a part-time course. So the aim here is to allow pilots, line pilots and, and professional pilots who are flying uh, as a main job to be able to also study in the meantime. It, this can be done in the way where the course, first of all, is um, fully online. So there is no problem of mobility or, or, being, or needing to be present in a particular country or whatever. So being online, this is, this, uh, it makes this possible. And also in the structure, it is designed to be able to allow pilots to work around their personal personal uh, life schedule and also their operational or professional schedule and modules uh, are the the courses organized in a number of I will call the modules here because uh, Embry-Riddle uh, refers to subjects as uh, courses and the University of Malta refers to them as study units so I'll just define them as modules and I'll, I'll expect that um, that will be uh, a bit clearer to understand here 
So each module is run over a nine week period. And this mod these modules are done asynchronously, which means that you can access the computer and access the, the subject matter and do your work at your own pace, at your own time in different time zones in that nine week period. And over that nine week period, the students are assessed and basically the subject matter is closed. And then of course, there are a number of uh, these modules which have to be taken to complete an academic year. Students are, I, I, I say here, the students are uh, nominally expected to follow about seven modules in 12 months. I say that because uh, that is what is expected to be able to complete the uh, program in four calendar years, 48 months. But both universities have mechanisms which allow students to actually uh, the, the, uh, follow the, the, uh, the course at a slower pace in one year, perhaps, or another, to be able to allow even, for more, even more flexibility. Next page, please. So, the, uh, a bit of details here. The uh, program is uh, defined as a 240 ECTS, the, that is the European uh, Standard 200 uh, European uh, Credit uh, Transfer System. 240 ECTS is for, for the degree program, which translates to 120 credits in the US. And out of those, because the, uh, the students will have, you will have an ATPL, we, con we uh, recognize your training in ATPL pr as prior learning. So you will be exempt from following 30% of the course. This is a very important feature for, um, uh, for students to understand that out of those 240 CTSs, you will not be required to, to follow or sit for seven, uh, the assessment of 72 of those. And this allows, together with the courses running throughout the year, for students to be able to, uh, to follow the, uh, the six or seven courses or modules uh, throughout, throughout uh, 12 calendar months. Another aspect is that these modules are also repeat, uh, many of these modules are repeated, uh, primarily those of uh, Embry Diller and Nautical University, those are repeated uh, a number of times throughout the year. So this allows students to be able to choose the exact timing for, for, uh, for each uh, module. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, that is uh, basically what uh, I'd like to, to tell you as a teaser, as an introduction to this whole uh, to, to, to today. So uh, there are the contact, my contact details on this slide. Please feel to con to free to contact me either on my, uh, on my by telephone or by, uh, by email or, uh, or contact my colleagues as, as, as you feel comfortable. And uh, I will uh, leave the floor for my colleagues uh, from Emory Riddle. Thank you, David. Uh, before we continue, I'd just like to um, remind uh, everyone that if you'd like to post any uh, questions or ask any questions to our panelists, uh, you can do so uh, by clicking on the Q&A button in the Zoom menu. And uh, over to Kirsten. Thank you, Jason. I um, would like to welcome everyone. And um, I also would like to start out my overview by introducing you to the three campuses. Ember Riddle has residential campuses in Daytona Beach, Florida, in Prescott, Arizona, and the Ember Riddle Worldwide campus encompasses the online campus plus over 130 military and civilian satellite campus locations around the globe, including Embry-Riddle Asia, Embry-Riddle Central and South America, and Embry-Riddle Europe. The dual degree partnership with University of Malta is coordinated through the Embry-Riddle Europe campus. And I will be your point of contact should you have any further questions um, after today's webinar. Um, Ember Riddle will celebrate its 100th anniversary in 2026 and has developed from a small aviation company to one of the world's leading aerospace and aviation universities. Ember Riddle Worldwide has a diverse student body of approximately 25,000 students 
and our class sizes are still only 20 students on average. As a student, you will have the opportunity to work and interact with fellow classmates and instructors across the world and across the aviation and aerospace industries. This facilitates important networking and virtual classroom interactions. You will encounter people at every level of the career ladder in various industries. Being an Eagle also secures your ability to join our network of 137,000 alumni, many of whom have notable career highlights. For example, seven of our alumni went on to become astronauts. The majority of graduates have an excellent post-graduation employment rate and earn high salaries. As you can see on this map, Embry-Riddle Worldwide has a strong presence in Europe at the US military bases, where we provide access to excellent aviation and aerospace education to service members and their dependents. The only civilian campus in Europe is located in Frankfurt. Embry-Riddle Europe relocated in January of 2021 from Berlin to the House of Logistics and Mobility in Frankfurt Gateway Gardens which is literally in walking distance to the Terminal 2 of the Frankfurt Airport. The Europe campus works with prospects and students in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. We're extremely pleased to be here as we are in close proximity now to dozens of aviation and aerospace industry partners and many academic institutions with whom we look forward to collaborating. If your travels ever bring you to Frankfurt and you would like to visit, please give me a call and I will arrange a meeting. Embry-Riddle Worldwide offers online degree programs at the bachelor's, master's, and PhD levels. Ms. Weiland will be addressing those in her overview of the College of Aeronautics. I'd like to mention here that the Europe campus offers these online and face-to-face -face professional education courses on topics such as aviation cybersecurity, aviation safety, and aviation English. They are the perfect fit for upskilling on the individual and organizational level. And we can tailor these courses to your company's needs and deliver them virtually or in person. The Office of Professional Education also offers other customized and off-the-shelf seminars and courses. The beauty, as Dr. Mandarin already mentioned, the beauty of the online asynchronous format is that you can study virtually from anywhere in the world at the time that works for you. You benefit from a dedicated advisor, which would be me, who's available to provide individualized support via phone, email, Zoom, or Teams from the time you're admitted all the way through graduation and even beyond. Whether you have the issues, any issues with logging onto your system, need library research help or IT support, you can reach out to me first and I'll see if I can help you. We also have quite the collection of academic resources available to support your academic success. As your advising office, we offer workshops and professional development events. You have access to the amazing Hunt Library with their diverse offerings of services. You have access to mentors in the College of Aeronautics and an unbelievable Dean of Students Office. You also have access to a government, student government association and e-union, which is a social media platform customized for Embry-Riddle Eagles, similar to that of LinkedIn and Facebook, allowing for even, for even a more dynamic and student experience. Every year we try to hold a graduation here in Europe, actually in Germany, close to Frankfurt. And we, as an Embry-Riddle graduate, you have access to graduation ceremonies all over the world. So in closing, I'd like to say that at Embry-Riddle, you get much more than just a degree. You get a high quality education. It is personal, for, it is full of personal academic and professional growth. There we have small classes, mentors and coaches, and we allow you to, again, participate in 
in social ceremonies as well as um, events that help you grow as a professional. And this is my contact information. Again, please um, feel free to reach out to me if you are ever in the area or have any questions whatsoever. And with that, I will turn it over to, to Linda. Hey, Kristen, thank you so much. Next slide, please. I'd like to just take a minute first to say thank you for this opportunity and share a little bit of information about the College of Aeronautics. We're under Dr. Uh, Dean Witcher. And um, next slide, please. Our mission is to develop and provide both the graduate and undergraduate academic programs for students to excel in the aviation industry. And we've recently include the small UASs and we also have the aviation maintenance. Next slide. Who we are, we have about 75 employees in the College of Aeronautics, which 71 of us are full-time faculty. We have about 415 adjuncts all over the world too that have a diverse background. We have three academic departments and one flight department. Next slide, please. What do we do? We have 19 academic programs, which have supported over 13,000 students at taking over 53,000 courses in the uh, last uh, couple of years. Next slide, please. Degrees with the careers in mind, and that's one of the things that I think is really uh, a, a plus point. On top of, we were rated best online program for the bachelors in 2021. Our undergraduate programs include aeronautics, aviation maintenance, engineering, safety and unmanned systems. We have graduate programs that also include all of these areas, but they also expand into cybersecurity, human factors, and our new space operations. We include 12 graduate certificate programs too. Next slide, please. Accreditation and recognition is important to Embry-Riddle and we are accredited through the SACS, which is the Southern Association of College and Schools Commissions on Colleges. We also have accreditation through AVET, which deals with the engineering field, ABBY, which deals with aviation at, from the academic perspective and the Royal Aeronautical Society has also uh, blessed six programs, including the Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics, which is part of our dual program with Malta. Next slide, please. Quality assurance. Embry-Riddle has uh, different points that ensure us to make sure that all of our academic programs are full of quality and innovation and meet industry standards. As I said, SACS and Abbey's are part of it. And we also have an, an alignment with an industry board to ensure that we're very closely aligned with the aviation industry. We have articulation agreements with other universities like this one with Malta, where we can do cooperation and dual degrees. Next slide. Workplace applicability. I think our, uh, Industry board ensures that we're looking at areas that make sure that we have a good presence in accident investigation, airport management, air transportation, technical writing, operations, air crew members, and other areas in air traffic control and aviation maintenance. You can see that we have a lot of employment and these companies work with us, such as Boeing and UPS. Next slide. All right, I wanna turn it over to Mark. Thank you for uh, this. And Mark, if you could take it away with the Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics, mahalo. Great, thank you so much, uh, Kirsten and Linda for kind of um, giving us that great background on Embry-Riddle. I hope everyone sees uh, that we're pretty proud of our programs and uh, we're just, we're thrilled to be part of Embry-Riddle and to bring you some information today to uh, just give you some background and help everyone make informed decisions about their future. Um, so next slide, please, Kirsten. W the program, the way we think of it is, at Embry-Riddle is it really is our foundational program. It is our largest program. We'll have some numbers in just a second. But not only is it our largest in terms of the numbers of students and faculty that are engaged in the program, but it really has um, a long history. It's been around for decades at Embry-Riddle. And what that means is that we feel like we've really made an impact in the uh, 
the aviation world and that a lot of people around the world in aviation either have a degree from Embry-Riddle or know somebody. Uh, we find that students often can relate to their bosses and coworkers who are involved in, in one of our Embry-Riddle programs. Uh, and this particular one, the Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics, is our largest uh, program and the one that has kind of the most history. So this slide just indicates one of the things that we think makes us very successful is it's very interdisciplinary. We have um, people involved in the program from all parts of the aerospace community. Um, some military, a lot work for aviation manufacturers, some for the FAA, um, and many airline pilots uh, pursue this program. And so what we try to do is make it as practical and useful for pro career progression as we possibly can. So it doesn't just cover one uh, component. It really is multidisciplinary. It talks about kind of management and accounting aspects of aviation, along with the more kind of standard fare of security, safety, uh, human factors, air traffic control, and things like that. Uh, next slide, please. Again, it's the largest degree that we have uh, by far at Embry-Riddle. Uh, we want it to be flexible and for students to be able to tailor it to their needs. So we include um, a variety of options, including minors in our program that helps uh, folks kind of customize it to their uses, their needs, and their per personal and professional goals. Um, and then we maintain this focus on employability and practicality of all of our courses and our overall degree program. We work closely with employers uh, constantly to make adjustments to our program to make sure that our folks are, are well employable um, and in high demand. And so we're very proud that we keep our fingers on, on the pulse of the industry and that our folks place very well uh, and earn uh, very respectable salaries. Next slide, please. So what this slide speaks to the most to me is just to give folks a little bit of an idea for what our courses involve. And the number one buzzword that I would say is flexibility. It's already been discussed that our courses are done asynchronously, which means you don't have to attend a particular meeting at a particular time um, in person or online. The work is all done uh, virtually through the learning management system Canvas. It's a very elegant very refined program and a typical well all of our courses are broken into nine segments or modules each is one week and so there's a variety of material a little bit of reading usually some videos maybe a slideshow presentation that students look at and then they often the the sort of standard across courses is they do one or two assignments often a discussion blog um, for one of them and the other one might be a brief presentation or a brief paper on the subject matter for the week and then in roughly two months at the end of nine weeks that course is done and folks move on um, and again if you have access to the internet and a web browser then we give you access to canvas and everything else falls into place and we have of course technical support to help people uh, if they ever run into problems next slide please yeah, so everything is very flexible, um, and with the flexibility, um, speaking for the Ember-Riddle courses, very few of our courses have prerequisites or, or ordering. There are a few, and there are recommended um, directions and paths, but often students can pick a path um, that really agrees with their schedule and their interests. Um, and so, you know, there's always uh, a way to flex. Um, we're very proud of the fact that we have a mix of full-time faculty and adjuncts. Of course, our full-time faculty run the program and administer things and consult with industry partners to make sure that we're staying on target. Um, but then we have hundreds of adjunct instructors that are actively working in the field. And so many of our students' instructors are airline pilots. They work for the FAA. They work in aviation safety and management positions full-time. So that's part of what helps us keep the material very relevant. And of course, every Everything we do it has a global perspective. Our students, our faculty, our subject matter is all intentionally and very deliberately designed to have an international flair. Next, please. 
Great. So that was a very brief overview um, it, with just highlights, and uh, I'll address any questions that might come up in the Q&A, but also um, feel free to address me or Linda. I'm the outgoing program coordinator for this program, and Linda is just picking it up over the next few weeks, uh, but I'll be staying with, uh, with Embry-Riddle just running a different program. So if ever uh, you need information, feel free to check out the catalog links at the bottom or contact me and or Linda, and we'd be thrilled to, to hear from you and help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kristen, uh, Mark, and Linda. And then now we'll uh, go over to our next presentation where we'll take a, a deeper look at the uh, Bachelor of Science in Air Transport. Um, over to you, David. Okay, so thank you very much, Jason. The uh, what I'm going to show you here is how the uh, two degrees, the Bachelor of Air Transport and the BSA, uh, come together to form a dual degree program because we do not, unlike uh, Embry-Riddle University, we do not offer the Bachelor of Science in Air Transport as a standalone uh, degree program. Next slide, please, Jason. The strength the technical strength of the program is that it, it, uh, it is based on four pillars, as I briefly uh, addressed beforehand. One is the science, the other is the technology, the other is the broader aspects of uh, air transport and the communications and humanities. And across that, cross-cutting, there is a quite a, uh, a strong contribution to, to uh, improving this, the, uh, the students' uh, soft skills. Okay, so from a science perspective, uh, there are physics, maths, and uh, uh, statistics, metrology, and uh, theory of flight, uh, and so on and so forth. When it comes to technology, then, it is the application for the aircraft. So building on what you would have already learned in an ATPL, you're looking at uh, the, uh, the more theoretical approach towards an understanding of avionics structures, uh, aircraft design, uh, power plants, and uh, aircraft systems. And you see their computing. And that was introduced there intentionally because of the need for uh, the modern pilot to become more and more uh, closely understanding the automation on board the airplane. As you will probably be aware, the divide between the automation and the human pilot remains a major challenge, and it remains a uh, it will it will become a bigger and bigger issue unless uh, the the uh, the pilot community does come closer towards automation. So having exposure to computing uh, is uh, important. Then the the uh, broader aspects you will you will see things like accounting and economics. Of course, because pilots are involved in decision making, for example, in fleet planning, uh, aviation law, human factors uh, and management, uh, leadership skills, of course, you can, you can look at as soft skills and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, next slide, please. I've, we've listed here the outcomes, the learning, the primary, the top level learning outcomes of the degree program. These are available on our website. I'll show you this on the, on the next slide. But basically speaking, we're looking at uh, improving the capability of the, uh, of the pilot to do a good job in the future. Of course, uh, it, not only in the air, but also on the ground with a, uh, with a uh, university degree. Okay, next slide, please. How do you access the, the website? The dual degree program is advertised through the University of Malta website, uh, and the link is shown above. The link here is, is shows you the route to the uh, to the university's main website web page. And on the fr front page, the front page actually changes in terms of the picture shown. But at halfway down, there's uh, study at UM, and if you type in as I have done here, <clears throat> excuse me, air transport. You will, it will lead you to the proper, to the proper uh, route immediately. So uh, recapitulating, go to the front page of the University of Malta, uh, um.edu.mt, and in the section of study at UM, type in air transport. Once you run that, it will take you to the right page. Uh, next slide, please, Jason. And you can choose the, uh, the commencing date. And in this case, we, so we would select October 2021. After that, next slide, please. 
you get to you, you, you get to uh, different different selections of pages, but one one point is look at uh, is the program the, the program structure itself, and I've briefly uh, put in collated all the program structure of the four years. I have the four years in in subsequent pages. I won't bo bother you bore you with all the details. These are available for you to see on the on the website. But just to give you an indication. We 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 uh, group the uh, the modules again. They're called courses in uh, Ember Riddle's program and study units in the University of Malta. We group these modules in semesters. So we have semester one from October till February, semester two from from, from February till June, and what we call the summer period from June till October, till the end of September, and we group the, uh, the these modules into these three times of the year, having approximately between three and four modules in each group, notionally. I say notionally because, as Mark and I have explained already, the, uh, the courses are repeated yearly, so you can pick and choose and sequence them. And as Mark was saying, most of, even out in our case, in the University of Malta's case, most of the, uh, most of the, um, the modules don't have prerequisites. But I highlight here three uh, three uh, modules, those are given recognition for prior learning. So although those are inside, formally inside the program, you are exempt having an ATPL or equivalent, you are exempt from sitting into these, into these subjects and therefore also are exempt from uh, assessment. So you will see, for example, out of the first three in the first semester, you only follow and, and uh, are assessed for two. In the second semester, there are three compulsory and to choose from a list below. So there are four and you're exempt from one. And in the third semester in the summer period on the right, you have two compulsories, one of which you're exempted from and to choose from uh, one from another two. So you will follow two uh, in all. That is notionally how we plan it, but you can choose the timings as, as I've explained. And in, a, in all, you would need to do seven in 12 months to have completed the academic year to then progress to the next year. Next slide, please. The same will happen in year two. So I will not go into the details here. And then in year three, next slide, please. Again, the structure is very, very similar. And in year four, what, we, what I need to highlight, next slide, please, is that throughout the year, there is a capstone or what we call long essay, which is really a, uh, a little project to be able to uh, to carry out uh, in order to uh, bring your studies to to an end. That is uh, essentially one one uh, one module in, in in the in the year. That is all I need to say to you. I think I hand over to you at this point, Jason. Thank you, David. Um, so now I'll we'll talk a bit about the online learning platform which we use at the University of Malta. And our platform is called the Virtual Learning Environment or VLE. Um, uh, this platform is based on Moodle, which is a uh, very popular online learning platform. And uh, as you will see, if you join the program, it is very similar in functionality to the platform used by Embrider. So it's very similar to Canvas in terms of functionality. So you can get access 24 uh, 7 to course material and other resources you can communicate with other students and with your instructor instructor or lecturer um, uh, online via a discussion forum and so on uh, you can also submit your assignments and get your assignments graded through the platform the platform also supports video conferencing uh, via zoom and also it also supports assessments including online exams um, on the right of the slide, you can see a snapshot of this virtual learning environment. Apart from access to the online learning platform, the University of Malta provides uh, several support services and tools to its students. Uh, these include the ones shown on the slide, so you will get access to the whole Google suite of tools, including a Gmail account, a Google Drive, and so on. Uh, the University of Malta also has an eSIMS system, which is a student information management system. Uh, this is uh, particularly for students to be able to view their records, to register for particular courses or study units, to view their exam results, and so on. 
Uh, the university also offers a range of library services, including access, free access to several um, uh, databases, including IEEE Explore, Scopus, ProQuest, and so on. Uh, we also offer a range of software, which is uh, provided for free for staff and students, including MEPLAB, uh, where the University of Malta has a campus-wide license, um, access to other software packages, such as IBM SPSS, uh, statistical uh, software package, Autodesk, and also other uh, software tools. Uh, also, on top of that, the university offers administrative, IT, and academic support. Moving on to the entry requirements, which I believe is very interesting to all of you out there, and I believe you also have a question which is related to this uh, part of the uh, of, of the degree program. So, for the entry requirements, the uh, the University of Malta has what we refer to as specific as well as general entry requirements. And for this course, one of the specific entry requirements is that you need to be a professional air transport pilot, as uh, my colleagues mentioned earlier. So this course is intended for pilots who have an ATPL license, an air transport pilot license, uh, or the equivalent and, uh, license, which is issued by the uh, by EASA or the FAA or uh, an equivalent authority. So that is the main uh, requirement. Um, and then we provide two routes for entry into the program. The first one is uh, where the applicant satisfies the UM general entry requirements uh, with A level in physics. That is the first uh, route to enter the course. And in the next slide, I will explain what the general entry requirements are in a bit more detail. So that is the first route. The second route to enter the course is via what we refer to as the maturity clause where the University of Malta uh, classifies um, people or applicants who are 23 years of age or uh, older uh, to enter a course uh, using this uh, maturity clause, so adult learners. And what we do in this case is that we perform an interview with the applicant where we assess their academic standard. So uh, in this interview, we interview the applicant and find out what their academic background is. And if we find that they um, lack in a certain academic areas, for example, then we, we might accept them into the course on certain conditions that, for example, they follow additional uh, study units or courses to make up for um, certain gaps in their academic background. So to reiterate, we have two um, routes to enter the course. One is via the U University of Malta general entry requirements with a level in physics or via the maturity clause. In this slide, I'm going to explain a bit more about the general entry requirements. And uh, the general entry requirements consist of a matriculation certificate and a pass at grade five or better in the secondary education certificate examinations, what we refer to as O levels in English language, Maltese, and mathematics. And the matriculation certificate comprises six subjects, two subjects at advanced level. Uh, one of which would be in physics, as I mentioned on the previous slide, three subjects at intermediate level, and systems of knowledge. These general entry requirements, which I'm mentioning over here, are based on the Maltese education system. So these requirements apply specifically for um, uh, applicants who have completed their education in Malta. For international applicants, uh, what we ask is that they present qualifications which are equivalent to the above. And in fact, for international applicants, uh, there is a web page on the University of Malta website where international applicants can refer in order to find what qualifications they would need to present in order to meet the general entry requirements. So, for example, uh, students from the US would require a high school graduation diploma in order to um, satisfy the general entry requirements of the dual degree program. Moving on to the application process. So uh, the application process is divided into three main steps, where the first step is to complete and submit an online application form. So this is where you enter your details, upload documentation, including CVs, certificates, licenses, logbooks, and so on. Uh, the application can be completed in, at mul in multiple stages. So you can save it and then complete it at a later time at your convenience. Um, uh, however, the application is only submitted once you, play, once you pay the application fee. And I'll talk a bit about the application fees in the next slide. 
Following submission, uh, you will receive two emails from the University of Malta, uh, one email confirming a payment of the application fee and one email confirming receipt of the application. So you will uh, receive two emails uh, after you've submitted your application. Over here on the right of the uh, slide, you can see where you can um, begin the application process by clicking on apply now. And uh, over here, I'd like to um, emphasize that for the October 2021 intake, the, the next intake, the deadline for applications is Tuesday 24th of August, and all applications have to be done through the University of Malta website. The University of Malta accepts uh, late applications as well up to the end of September. However, there will be a late application fee which applies. The second stage of the application process is the application evaluation. So at this point, your application will be evaluated by the admissions board of the University of Malta in collaboration with uh, Embridel University. And if all of these specific and gender entry requirements are met, then the application is approved. On the other hand, if the applicant is an adult learner, an interview is held, as I explained earlier. As a result of uh, this application evaluation, the admissions board will send its recommendation to the office of the registrar. Um, and based on, on that decision, a decision letter will be sent or a letter of acceptance will be sent from the office of the registrar to the applicant, informing them whether they have been accepted into the program. Moving on to uh, fees uh, related to this uh, dual degree program. So uh, the first are the application fees. So these are paid once you submit your application. Uh, for applicants with local qualifications, the application fee is 23 euro. And for applicants with international qualifications, it is 95 euro. Um, as I mentioned before, late, application, uh, late applications are accepted. However, a late application fee applies as shown on the slide. Um, the other tuition, the other fees are the tuition fees, where for this course, the tuition fees are 8,000 euro per academic year. And these tuition fees apply both to EU and EEA applicants, as well as non-EU and non-EEA applicants. And also important to emphasize is that this is the total tuition fee, which includes both UM and uh, Embridal fees. So this is the total overall fee per academic year. A graduation fee will also be due to Embridal at the end of the studies. Another thing which I'd like to mention is that for Maltese residents, um, the applicants can also apply for the Get Qualified Scheme. Uh, the dual degree program is eligible um, under the Get Qualified Scheme. So uh, with this um, scheme, uh, residents and applicants who are participating in the program and who complete the program successfully can apply and get up to 12,500 euro in tax credits. So um, that brings me to the end of the presentation. On the slide, I'm showing a few important links where you can uh, find further information, uh, where you can find how, where to apply for the course, uh, information on admissions to the course, information on the bylaws of the course, on the Get Qualified Scheme, and also information for international applicants. So I thank you very much for your attention and uh, you can uh, contact us on the details shown below, either contact myself or my colleagues from the Institute of Aerospace Technologies and we would be more than happy to provide you with more information. So after those presentations, um, we can move on to the Q&A session. And uh, we have, I believe, a few questions which we can uh, address now. Um, one of the presentations, uh, well, sorry, one of the questions um, from one of the attendees is, uh, can you please provide me with some details into how the course modules will help me to progress through my career? Um, um, would you like to, uh, to address that, David, perhaps? Uh, could, could do, Mark. Uh, any comments on your side or? Yeah, 
Yeah, I do. If you don't mind, um, sure, please. Yeah, I saw that question and I kind of like it because that's the kind of thing we think about all the time is I thought um, you were... how do we make sure that our students are getting things that actually benefit them and that they not only are checking the squares to get a degree, but it advances their career in a tangible way. So I'll tell you the way we think about it as we uh, have designed and we keep updated the Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics program. We basically want all of our courses to do two things. We, we want them to plant the seeds for things that will help you in the future, maybe a year in the future, maybe a decade in the future. But just some examples that won't surprise you is, you know, you're reading things and you're watching videos and you're going to agree with some things and you're going to disagree with some things. It nurtures your ability to critically think. We make you sort of contemplate, why do you disagree with something? And so, you know, the, the notion of critical thinking as a tool that you can use kind of throughout your career development development is something that's more long-term. Another one that has short-term and long-term benefits is communication. No matter who we are and how much we've written and how much we've done presentations, we can always get a little bit better. And so our coursework is designed to sort of help coach us developmentally through the program and make us write a little bit better, make us present a little bit better, make us think like other people a little bit better so that we can convey what, what we're thinking. And so um, that obviously is something that could have benefits in your career this week, next week, but also helps you prepare for the future. Now, I'll transition a little bit to some of the nearer term things. Now, folks in this program are all going to be uh, experienced professional pilots. So you have a lot of background. Have we lost Mark? Possibly. Yes. Okay. So perhaps uh, we go some to legal issues, things like management issues, things like human factors. We deal with these things all the time. But again, even if we're professionally engaged and we're practicing them all the time, we think that our courses, we often hear this from students, that we talk about something in class uh, about human factors that's a new way to think about human factors that they've not contemplated before and they actually get to practice it. And so that's the value of the discussions we have is sometimes our students say, you know what, we talked about that last week. I tried this thing and with respect to safety or human factors or dealing with my boss or dealing with a passenger or a flight crew and it was effective or not effective. And so again, those are some of the ways that we feel like courses not only prepare us for down the road, but they give us things that we can tangibly apply in the coming weeks. Thank you, Mark. I hope that answered the question. I can, I can try, try again if I missed the mark. <laughs> and I think that was uh, it was a very good answer for, to that question. Uh, thank you, Mark, for that. Um, uh, our next, next question um, is from another attendee who wanted us to highlight again the entry requirements. Um, so I'll go over that um, one more time. So as I mentioned in the presentation, we have two routes to enter the course. Uh, one of them is by satisfying the general entry requirements of the University of Malta with um, an A level in physics, a pass uh, is enough. That is one route to enter the course. And the second route is via the maturity clause. So if you are 23 years of age or older, then uh, we'll do an interview with you in order to assess your background. And uh, based on, on that interview, we can decide to accept you into the course. So there are two routes to enter uh, the program. Um, our next uh, question is from another attendee who says, uh, does CPL with ATPL theory work? Um, uh, perhaps... Uh, yes, they... I'll answer that. Uh, it depends, and I'll say why it depends, because the uh, scope of having uh, pilots uh, with an ATPL is to ensure that they have the, the theory and also the training required, not the uh, flight time. So we're not after the... Uh, 50 hours, 100 hours, 200 hours, but we need to have the competence uh, primarily in the in the theory, but also in other things like crew resource management and so on and so forth. The answer really lies into whether the uh, the uh, you you will have done enough 
in your ATPL to cover the study units or modules for which we'll be giving you the RPL. You will actually see that in the courses that we are give, you are given RPL. Those have the same uh, syllabus structure and similar, similar outcomes as you would have in your uh, flying training, basically built on, on our, in our case, the uh, IASA uh, training program. So the answer really lies in the detail of what do you have, but uh, notionally a frozen ATPL would be considered positively. Thank you, David, for that uh, response. Um, our next question um, uh, is, uh, how challenging will it be if I don't have maths A-level or intermediate? And um, I believe, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, David, we've addressed that part as well in the, in the program because we have, uh, in the first year of the program, we have um, uh, maths uh, modules, uh, maths uh, courses, which are specifically aimed at bringing up the yes. uh, level up to Yes, the uh, the modules, uh, the early modules provided in mathematics are more or less equivalent to A level, and that is why we removed the uh, requirement uh, for uh, students to have an A level in mathematics. Uh, however, if you pass through the maturity clause, uh, you will it, it will be assessed. There is a possibility that you might be asked to do one, perhaps one, or maybe two. It uh, depends on the case, of course, two, uh, two such uh, courses uh, with Embry-Riddle University prior to actually starting the, uh, the formal program. But that is how we would handle it. Thank you, David. Um, I think we have time for one last uh, question uh, from Thomas Lindenberger, who asked um, how many students actually succeed with the BSc, and the, the two BSCs, and how many finish in 48 months. Um, uh, perhaps we should highlight here that the Bachelor of Science in Air Transport, uh, this is the first time that we're offering the degree. However, perhaps we can ask our colleagues at Andrew Riddle to, um, um, to mention approximately how many graduate from the Bachelor of Science in, in, in Aeronautics, just to give an, an indication. I actually don't remember the exact number, but it's in the neighborhood of a thousand a year that graduate from our program. Um, and then I, I'll tack this on. Um, there was a question that appeared and disappeared, but it's sort of uh, germane in the same general topic area that in the flexibility of this uh, dual degree program, um, it, it's it may be a little bit different, but one of the advantages of a degree program like this is the flexibility. Somebody asked, for example, if they could finish it in 40 months instead of 48. And unless uh, I misunderstand something, um, my impression is that, yes, that is uh, quite possible, depending on um, how, uh, how aggressively a student picks up their classes and advances uh, from one year to the next. Um, and then as far as the success of the dual degree program, um, I think that that remains to be seen, right? This is a program uh, standing up, so we don't have uh, definitive statistics. I mean, clearly we have all the right energy and passions behind it to make it successful for all of the students that, that embark on it. And we've got a lot of individualized attention that we can give people. Um, but as far as you know, any track record, uh, unfortunately, we just don't have that yet. If I may add, Mark, um, I, I'd like to highlight two things. First, from the student's question, this is not, you don't have to uh, study for two degrees, you study for one degree. And in reality, all you need to do is three modules more than one degree. And that will give you the, uh, the award of two degrees. So it's, it's uh, basically the two degrees overlapping very closely, I'd say about 90%. Uh, over each other with just three modules uh, being needed to be done extra over the 240 ECTSs or 120 credits. When you look at the, uh, the recognition for prior learning, those you will be exempt from, and you leave what you need to do, that is, that is uh, planned to be a 50% effort of a full-time course. So notionally, if you, pr if you study and finish in 48 months, it, you will be re required to do a 50% effort that, effort that you would otherwise be doing in a full-time course. And the, as Mark was saying, you can 
continue, you can extend your time and do this over five, six, seven years. We don't recommend extending it eight, nine to 10 years. And that is why we, we notionally, as a starting point, plan it as a four year program with the ability to actually take a longer time to complete the, the amount of work. Any comments, Mark? Uh, no, no, that sounds fine. And I saw that it was answered in text that it's designed notionally as a four year program. Um, and then you answered that just based on a students individual circumstances, the time, the time can vary. And that's part of the, the beauty of the flexibility. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think unfortunately, our time is up. Um, uh, um, what we'll do is uh, we'll, uh, we'll look at the questions which you've uh, sent us in the chat and in the Q&A section, and we'll definitely make sure to answer them and um, circulate the information to all of you who have attended after this webinar. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will, this webinar has been recorded, and so we'll send the uh, recording to everyone who has registered following the webinar, and we will also follow up uh, on the questions which uh, still need to be answered. Um, so once again, I'd like to thank all of the panelists and all of you who have attended this webinar, and uh, we look forward to uh, perhaps uh, working with you again um, and uh, accepting you in, in our program uh, this year. Um, so thank you very much, uh, everyone, uh, once again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for attending. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, all.